Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. If this is not your first time on the channel, you'll notice that I've been wearing this t-shirt in the last few videos. I'm not just some skanky ass bitch. I do just record all of these in sequence so I can get them all done and ready ahead of time. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard you are in for an absolutely fucking torrid time. This is a waste of your time, but hit subscribe before you change your mind on watching this content. The intention with today's video is to teach you the very basics on how to play with or against Thunder Dragons. We can identify the deck's weaknesses so that you can build a better deck. We can also identify its strengths so you know exactly how to play it. And of course, if you're against it, you need to know both of those things so that you can better your chances of defeating it. It isn't a big player in the meta at the moment, but it is still a very strong deck that is potentially being a little bit overlooked. It's got some real good versatility, and unfortunately, Colossus being banned has had a real negative effect on the deck, but that doesn't mean there isn't some hidden potential, especially with all of the new chaos support that we're seeing about. But that's enough shit talking from me. The intention today, as I say, is to get you ready to play Thunder Dragon. So we're going to suck right in for you now. The Thunder Dragon archetype was formally released in Soul Fusion at the tail end of 2018, but members have existed in the TCG since the release of the original Thunder Dragon from Metal Raiders, released in 2002 in North America, and just over a year later in Europe. The archetype is based on and around the original Thunder Dragon monster, taking large chunks of inspiration on this throughout the archetype in both terms of appearance and the effect activations from the hand. The Thunder Dragon archetype is pretty flexible, and as a result has seen much experimentation throughout the formats since its release, although it has largely fell off the main competitive scene since the incredibly powerful Thunder Dragon Colossus was banned. The deck for the longest time was joked about as being the bridesmaid but never the bride, and it's always been considered one of the best decks but never quite making it over the line. Despite this, the deck did actually see a good chunk of success up and until the banning of Colossus, eventually seeing a YCS win while being piloted by Jesse Cotton, winning and topping countless regionals, nationals and YCS level events along the way. So how does Thunder Dragon play? Thunder Dragon is pretty flexible in what it does, and it is adapted through a variety of different styles of play, but there's a good chunk of consistency in what it does particularly well. The main monsters primarily have abilities which intend to thin the deck, with discard and banish effects. Most of the Thunder Dragon monsters have a discard effect which results in searching another copy of itself or another Thunder Dragon card, or getting them back from the graveyard or banished pile. Most Thunder Dragon monsters also have an effect which can be activated when sent from the field to the graveyard or when they're banished. The benefits of the way the deck plays is how resourceful it can be, outgrinding many other decks by being able to consistently recycle resources, generate advantage, and use these to make trades with the opponent until they struggle to keep up, and eventually crank up the pressure through cards such as Thunder Dragon Titan. The deck also has some great control lines of play, although the likes of Colossus being banned has severely hindered this playstyle, with the decks mostly opting to go through a Titan control variant for this kind of role, although most people opt for combo-centric builds instead. The deck does have a handful of issues it encounters, having so many high-level monsters can inherently have its own problems. The normal summon in this deck largely being incredibly significant, or the hand can get clogged, especially when seeing multiples of any single card. The deck also relies heavily on being able to banish, and if this is shut down through the likes of Artifact Lancia, Chaos Hunter, or Imperial Iron Wall, the deck can be crippled. For the next part of the video, we're going to take a look at the Thunder Dragon cards, starting off with the monsters, then the spells and traps. I'll be glossing over the effects somewhat, so as to save some time, however I will be using images of the cards which will allow you to read the effects in full. That's right, you're probably going to need to read. We start off with Thunder Dragon Matrix. Quick effect, you can discard this card, then boost a Thunder Monster's attack by 500. If it's banished or sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add another copy of Matrix from the deck to the hand. You can only use one effect per turn, and only one stat turn. Next up we have Thunder Dragon, or OG Thunder Dragon as some people prefer to call it. 
You can discard this card and then add up to two copies of Thunder Dragon from your deck to your hand. As a random side note, if you play Goat, they can activate this even if they know they don't have any legal targets, just so they can shuffle their deck. Thunder Dragon Dark. Quick effect, you can discard this card to the graveyard to add another copy of Dragon Dark from the deck to the hand. If it's banished or it goes from the field to the graveyard, you can add a Thunder Dragon card from the deck to the hand, except for Dragon Dark. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. We also have Thunder Dragon Hawk. You can discard this card to special summon a Thunder Dragon monster that is banished or in your graveyard, except for Dragon Hawk. If it's banished or sent from the field to the graveyard, you can shuffle any number of cards from your hand into the deck and then draw that same number of cards. You can only use one Hawk effect per turn and only once that turn. After that, we have Thunder Dragon Roar. You can discard this card to add a Thunder Dragon card from your banished pile or graveyard except for Roar. If it's banished or sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon a Thunder Dragon monster from the deck in defense position, but return it to the hand during the end phase. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. We also have Thunder Dragon Duo. It can't be normal summoned or set, and it must first be special summoned from the hand by banishing a light and dark monster from the graveyard. Once per turn, if a monster effect is activated in the hand, it gains 300 attack until the end of this turn. When it destroys a monster by battle, you can banish a card from the graveyard to add a thunder monster from the deck to the hand. And then once per turn during the opponent's end phase, you can place one of your banished cards on the top or the bottom of your deck. We also have Thunder Dragon Lord. It can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from your hand by banishing level 8 or lower thunder monster from your hand or face up on your field during the turn a thunder monster's effect was activated in the hand. Once per opponent's turn, quick effect, you can banish two cards from your graveyard, including a thunder monster, then target a thunder monster you control. Your opponent can't target it with effects this turn. Once per turn during the end phase, you can send a thunder dragon card from the deck to the graveyard. We have Thunder Dragon Thunderstorm Ek. It requires two plus thunder monsters, and it's a link four. During your main phase, if you control this link summon card, you can target a thunder dragon monster in your graveyard or that's banished, Apply its effect that discards itself to activate, and then place that monster on the top or the bottom of the deck. This effect is a hard once per turn. If a thunder monster or monsters you control would be destroyed, you can banish three cards from the graveyard instead. We have Thunder Dragon Colossus. It requires one copy of Thunder Dragon plus one thunder monster. It must either be fusion summoned or special summoned during the turn a thunder monster's effect was activated in the hand, by tributing a Thunder Effect non-fusion monster, in which case, no poly is required. Your opponent can't add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them. If this card would be destroyed, you can banish a Thunder Monster from the graveyard instead. We have Thunder Dragon Titan. It requires three Thunder Dragon monsters. It must be either fusion summoned or special summoned by banishing a Thunder Monster from your hand and a Thunder Fusion monster you control, except for Titan, in which case, no poly is needed. When a Thunder Monster's effect is activated in the hand, even during the damage step, quick effect, you can destroy a card on the field. If this card be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish two cards from the graveyard instead. And lastly, we have Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. It requires two Thunder Dragon. Not that it really does much, but, you know, I thought it'd be a bit mean to leave it out. Most of these cards see some level of play, varying in numbers from format to format and depending on what variant of the deck is being played. Thunder Dragon Colossus is at this time banned in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, and the reason for this is because of the amount of abuse seen by various combo decks that could quite easily summon it out in Break My Board fashion. The card does actually promote some insane power creep. By making it so the players can't add to the hand, it promotes the creation of cards that summon or directly play cards from the deck, and summoning from the deck is one of the strongest mechanics in the game. See basically every broken card of the modern era. As a result, more cards with these mechanics need to be made in order to try and balance the books per se. It's a discussion I could go into in some depth, but hopefully what I've mentioned here makes some sense. The Thunder Dragon Link is a bit rubbish, and so too is Dragon Lord, so it's rare to see these in play. Although I know some decks are running a single copy of Lord. Nobody plays Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon either, although it's pretty broken to summon against Sky Striker since they can't Widow Anchor it. 
For the spell and trap support that the deck has in Archetype, the options are pretty limited. And in fact, only really the fusion spell from these sees any amount of play. Usually a two to three copies, depending on the build. But we're going to cover the trap options too for the sake of detail. So naturally, we start off with Thunder Dragon Fusion. You can fusion summon a Thunder Fusion monster from the extra deck by shuffling materials listed from it on the field or graveyard and or face up banished cards into the deck. During your main phase, except for the turn it was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card to add a Thunder Monster from the deck to the hand. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Thunder Dragon Discharge Ew, growth. The activation of your Thunder Monster's effects can't be negated. Once per turn, if a Thunder Dragon Monster or Monsters are summoned to your field, you can banish a Thunder Monster from your deck to destroy a spell or trap on the field. Thunder Thunders Thundered Hunders Special summon a Thunder Monster from your graveyard, then special summon as many monsters with the same name from your graveyard as possible. The special summon monsters by this effect are banished when they leave the field, and whilst they're face up on the field, you can't special summon monsters except for Thunder Monsters. You can only activate 100 Thunders per turn. Due to the huge evolution the deck has seen since its release, the number of cards we could consider to be Thunder Dragon support that isn't in Archetype is pretty endless. With this in mind, I'll be covering the cards that I think are the most prevalent. As always, these lists are not exhaustive and, from format to format, can be completely irrelevant. So we start off with Gold Sarcophagus. Wonder why this is at 1? No more wondering required. Pure advantage when used in this deck. Next up we have Allure of Darkness. Playing this deck for a short while has made me really struggle to play Allure in other decks. That might sound a bit odd, but the amount of benefits that this card offers for banishing a Thunder from hand is absolutely insane. In my opinion, definitely one of the best draw spells you can use in this deck. Chaos Shit. I'd say at this stage, this should also be self-explanatory, being able to banish light and dark monsters to summon or activate effects only to gain from banishing of those cards through their own effects, and the addition of likes of Chaos Creator, Chaos Space, and the soon-to-be mass-released Chaos Emperor prize card keeps the benefits of banishing rolling along. There's also plenty of room to be made for powerful Chaos options such as Levianir and Blackluster Soldier. There's also those little Chaos Dragons and Safer that can kind of fall into this weird overlapping category too. Denko Seca, Aloof Lupine, Battery Man, Solar. Anyone who's played this deck already knows the dilemma with this slot. These are some of the most common normal summon options people go for in this deck. Denko Seca usually being a side deck option, Aloof and Battery Man duking it out for taking up the main space in the deck as the best normal summon option. Solar in particular is insane if it's used in builds that use the likes of Dimension Shifter or ones that can consistently find ways to banish in the same turn. Luna and Diana, the Dark and Light Spirits. These sort of fill a gap left by the two small Chaos Dragons being hit to one each. While not as free in terms of advantage, they do get you to trigger effects, get extra bodies on board and more. Also worth noting that Diana is a Thunder Monster, so there is some added synergy there. We also have the Dangers. What better than pseudo upstart goblins thin in the deck, flooding the field, and so much, much more. And to boot, they're all dark, so they fit nicely into the engine as a whole. Trishula, the Dragon of Icy Imprisonment. Does this say banish lots of shit? It looks like it says banish lots of shit. Many pluses. Banish the card from your opponent's deck and a card from their extra deck. Sounds aight to me. Nemesis. These fill a similar role to the Chaos options, giving you extra bodies in exchange for banishing cards and shuffling back banish cards. They also have a variety of attributes and types so that you can adjust packages accordingly. And just to round off the video, of course we're going to do some deck profiles here for you. We've got one by myself and one by Jamie the Kid, my good friend. Go check his channel out if you haven't already. Uh, his list is on here, you can go check out his explanation behind these and that kind of thing. Uh, and there'll be links to that on the video as well.
And that is all for today's video on how to play Thunder Dragon. The deck's been around a little while already, so you may have some ideas already having come out of this video on how to play it, but hopefully we're giving you that nice solid foundation to work with. As I've said, my recommendations would always be to check out some other content creators out there who will be more than happy to hook you up with a dose of Thunder Dragon action and teach you on how to play this deck to its best potential. Thank you very much for checking in, guys. If you haven't already, you should most definitely hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.